I've got to go and take a diarrhea. I have watched a surprising amount of live streams in my day. Not me, that's Kevin, who wrote this. Although I've watched, yeah, I've watched a lot of live streams. Live streams are cool. Of course, that's only surprising to me, since none of you knew me back in the day when streaming first started becoming popular, and I espoused my opinion that it was boring and pointless garbage. Oh, how times have changed. Yeah, I mean, there's so much stuff in like the technology world where you're just like, oh my god, that's a thing. When tablets first came out, I was like, who would want this? We have computers, it's ridiculous. And now tablets are everywhere, it's very wrong. And also, like, watching people play video games. You'd be like, who'd think that would be successful? Why would I just play the video games myself? It's, it's so obvious, like, in retrospect, when you're like, yeah, well, people like watching people play football. <laughs> Come on. However, despite all the streams I've watched, I've only managed to catch one moderately outrageous moment live. Kenny, what kind of douchebag garbage are you watching? Two, if you count the official chess.com stream of pog jams in which Moist Critical declared, My cock is throbbing after checkmating XQC in six moves. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even know that. Really though, that was also come on, six moves. <laughs> did you did, did he fools mate him? Wow. Really, though, that was Chess.com's own fault for taking Florida Man's microphone off mute. They really should have known better. But the more outrageous moment involved the Mario streamer, Grand Pooh Bear, who I mentioned in a previous episode. This happened back in 2018, when Pooh had taken a break from playing his normal games to spend a stream playing a bunch of garbage, ROM hacks, and fan-made games. He had a Super Nintendo cartridge with hundreds of games preloaded onto it, and he kept scrolling through different categories, picking games pretty much completely at random. A little way into the stream, Pooh reset the cartridge and again began scrolling, this time checking out the homebrewed games menu. He noticed two games listed Danger Zone and Danger Zone 2, and decided that if the game was good enough to get a sequel, then it must be worth trying out. This is gonna end well. Unfortunately, Danger Zone wasn't so much a game as it was a collection of 1990s resolution JPEG images of Japanese porn. Oh no, someone's hidden their porn on this. <laughs> Jokes on you, I'm into that shit. Ah, today's episode is brought to you by one of my favorite sponsors, probably possibly my favorite sponsor, and that is Vessi, who makes shoes with something called Dymatex, which makes them 100% waterproof. Look, summer is here, so you get those summer storms, don't you? It's like super hot during the day, 30 degrees, 30 plus degrees, whatever that is in Fahrenheit. Let's just say it's hot. And uh, you might be thinking, well, waterproof shoes, Simon, that sounds like it's going to be a sweat fest in my shoes. But it's not going to be, because through the magic of Dymatex, these are 100% waterproof, that's not water resistant, but your feet never sweat. Like, I wear Vessies all year round, even down here. This is the black Vessi Stormburst high top. You could wear that in summer and your feet wouldn't get sweaty, but why do that when there's the new low top one? Treat yourself, get yourself a new pair. Vessies are fantastic, they're the only shoes I wear, like, last two years, basic two and a half years. I'm not sure. Like, however long Vessi have been sponsoring me, they are my go-to shoes all the time, all year round. They're perfect. Vessi.com forward slash blaze, and you'll get an automatic 15% off your first purchase at checkout. They're all you need. Best shoes ever. Back to today's video. And thank you to them for sponsoring. Though it was certainly shocking at the time, it was just a few seconds of uneasiness followed by uncontrolled laughter. Of course, the truly shocking moments that have been caught on streams have been no laughing matter. Wait, aren't you going to get banned for that? Like, don't people get banned for this kind of stuff? Even though I know it's an accident, but you sure still showed, like, porn on a stream. It's probably not going to be a great look. For the people involved, anyway. I certainly plan on laughing at the stupidity of these people in these stories. And don't worry, I'll save all the violent crimes caught on streams for another episode, so you're welcome to laugh at today's entries as well, kid. I mean, there's no guarantee I wouldn't laugh at, laugh at the hugely violent stuff. Especially if it's someone who is violent getting violence dished out upon them. But who knows? Look, this is gonna be fun, let's go. The hottest streamer in Japan. Don't let the side title of this section fool you. We're not here to talk about Akira Fubuki. <laughs> Aisha Akira or any other Japanese women. I've never heard of these people. Who are these people? Oh, shocker. <laughs> is this, like, this has got to be some like uh, anime thing because Kevin's always like sliding anime references in and I'm like, bruh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. <laughs> Regardless of whether or not she was named Akira. No, the hottest streamer in Japan was a 40-year-old man thought to be Though, to be honest, he didn't look a day over 55. Dasuki was a Minecraft streamer of little notoriety. Maybe things would be different if he could, if I could read Japanese, but I haven't been able to find any information about him other than the one incident that we're going to talk about. It was a little before 9pm on October the 5th, 2015, when Dasuki decided to take a break from Minecraft to have a cigarette. Since he wasn't using his hands to game, he decided to instead use them to show off his fancy new oil match lighter that he had just purchased. If you have no idea what an oil match lighter is, 
is. I, I agree, I've got no idea what that is. Sometimes it's called a permanent lighter. Still don't exactly know what that is. You're not alone, as they aren't exactly commonplace. In fact, when I first watched the clips, I thought it was a Zippo that Dazuka was fiddling around with. And these lighters aren't that dissimilar from a Zippo. It's a metal container that you fill with lighter fluid, but it doesn't have a flint wheel like a typical Zippo or a disposable lighter. Instead, there's a metal matchstick containing a wick and a metal tip that screws into the container, doubling as the lid when your lighter isn't in use. The wick absorbs lighter fluid when it's in the container, and this is then scraped against a starter rod attached to the side of the lighter, similar to how you'd light a regular matchstick against the side of the box. Why, why are we learning all of this, Kevin? Because <laughs> I need to know this. We'll get there, Pop. We'll get there. In theory, I get why it would seem kind of cool, but getting the match lit is much more of an involved process than a disposable lighter. It also takes both hands, which isn't terribly convenient. But hey, I'm not here to review the product. It sounds like you are, Kevin, because you have told me a lot about this product already. I just need you to understand what Nasuke was fucking around with. Okay, better fucking become relevant, Kevin. His lighter was brand new, so he had to first fill it with lighter fluid, which he did while holding a lit cigarette in his mouth the entire time. I can see where this is going. Not so smart, my dude. But but don't be fooled by that like I was, because the lit cigarette was a red herring. Suzuki spilled some amount of lighter fluid while filling his new lighter, which is pretty common, and one more reason these things are a pain in the ass. Fortunately, he was prepared with some paper towels, which he used to wipe the wipe off his hands and the lighter. Um, I, I don't know, like lighter fluid? Oh god, what is it? I just have a- someone was calling me, but this was on my desk, so I thought I'd get it. I just have a lighter where you put butane in the bottom. And that's that. It's nice. Easy. Once the lighter was full and the match's wick had time to absorb the lighter fluid, it was time to show off the glory of the new permanent match. Dasuki began striking the match against the side of the container, but to no avail. I guess it's actually hard to like these when they're brand new, but it took an excruciating amount of time for him to finally get the metal to start sparking. I'll tell you what, how easy it is to start a lighter? You just... Easy. That's a lighter. That's how it should work. Easy. You flip it open, you turn it on. That's what she said! Boom. <laughs> Though once it did finally spark, Dazuke's livestream became the perfect tutorial on how to start a fire. A really, really large fire. <laughs> Although he had tried to wipe the fluid off his hands and the lighter, it appears that all he did was spread it around, coating the mess with a thin layer of flammable liquid. No. With a butane one, you put it in the bottom, it sprays around the place, but it instantly just evaporates into nothing. And then, I don't know, you don't light it. You, you hold it in your hand for a minute, and then you light it, and then you're done. Easy. Boom! God, I love playing with lighters. <laughs> such a child. Fire bad! Fire bad! Once the lighter finally sparked, the entire thing went up in flames. Panicked, Tsuke dropped the lighter and tossed the match thick into the trash bag beside him. It's hard to tell because the dropped lighter was off camera, but it looked like he was trying to and possibly successful in stomping out the fire. Unfortunately, there was still the matter of the match. As I just described, this wasn't some shitty little wooden matchstick. This was a wick soaked in lighter fluid. You actually have to put the thing out or it's just going to keep on burning, and that's exactly what it did while it was in the trash bag are you what what was <laughs> dude come on now the trash bag that was completely filled with paper my dude what are you doing suddenly a cute little anime voice could be heard saying in japanese behind you behind you look behind you it was the voice Dasuke used for his chat's voice to text feature and the viewers of his stream were trying to alert him to the new fire that was growing behind him he quickly sprung into action grabbing the flaming bag and taking it to the corner of the room where he kept a giant pile of empty cardboard boxes Bro, what are you doing? Why, why, <laughs> what is going on in your room? I'll just put this over here with the rest of the fire. Oh yeah, this dude lived in the most flammable room I've ever seen. After moving the fire, Dasuke then tried poking it with a folded up cardboard box. That did not help anything. Dude, how dumb are you? What is going on in your brain? <laughs> So he just put the cardboard box into the fire and leaned against the wooden walls to help the fire spread. He ran out of the room for a full minute, fetching the world's smallest bowl of water. And when he returned, the little anime girl continued to offer advice such as use the fire extinguisher and call 119. Chat was better equipped to deal with this problem than Dasuke was, but he wasn't going to listen to their advice. Wait, what makes- did he have a fire extinguisher? If he had a fire extinguisher, he wouldn't go get like a- a bowl of water, would he? I've got a fire extinguisher in there somewhere. <laughs> Well, like, this is just my office. I work here alone, but before there was, like, a production company in here, and they had, like, loads of people working, and so there was all this, like, safety equipment, which I don't maintain, because, I mean, alleged yeah, I do. I definitely do. 
no. <laughs> I definitely do maintain all the safety equipment. Right? I don't think it applies if it's just like you. <laughs> I hope. I hope. I mean, I don't know. It's not true, but that fire extinguisher has not been checked in a long time. So I'll just be like, I'll just get it over. <laughs> Nothing would happen. Instead, he grabbed a giant comforter, that's a duvet to you, Simon, and tried beating the fire. At first, it looked like this might actually work. Yeah, that's not a bad plan. And you think you might be insane because it could catch on fire, but all shit like this duvets and stuff, fucking, they are made to be fireproof these days, right? The fire was still pretty contained, so perhaps the large blanket would allow him to smother the fire, choking off his oxygen supply before it caught fire itself. And who knows, maybe that would have worked if it's what Tasuke had done. But what he actually did was just repeatedly lift the blanket up to hit the fire, essentially fanning the flame. <laughs> Dude, what is going on in your life? This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. More bowls of water were brought in by Dasuke and his parents, with whom he shared the house, but eventually the fire got too big and they had to evacuate. Wait, there's other people in the house? Why would he shout, Yo, call the fire brigade? Oh, wait, shouldn't shout that too loud, should I? <laughs> should, really shouldn't shout that too loud. Someone can actually hear it, call the fire brigade. <laughs> Use your brain, Simon. I'm glad my brain interrupted me before I finish that because there's people like working in the hallway on like construction. <laughs> but you should shout that, right? And then continue with the bowl. Oh my god, I didn't think about that at all. Oh, shocker. According to most reporting, Dasuke and his family suffered minor injuries but were fine. There was one report that the fire spread to two neighboring houses and killed a woman in one of them. But I've seen exterior footage of the fire damage and I'm confident it was contained to a single home. So what can we learn from all of this? Well, it turns out that garbage fires in your home spread pretty slowly and even when the garbage is all extremely flammable and possibly soaked in lighter fluid. The stream went on for over five minutes before the fire became big enough to warrant evacuation. Which, if you're there when the fire starts, is a very long time. Unless you are quite possible Possibly the single dumbest fucking person on the planet. A fire like this should be pretty easy to deal with without burning your house down. Oh yes, and it's probably a good idea to buy a fire extinguisher. Seriously, you can get a tiny one for 10 bucks or a 10 pound fire extinguisher for under 100 and they last for 10 years. Oh, then my fire extinguisher's fine! That's really cheap for what it is, and it's certainly more effective than trying to put a fire out with dry cardboard. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't think about any of this stuff. And I just, all I know is like we we've been having like construction work done on our house like two years because it's just a ruin and now it's a house, but like, the, like I didn't ask for anything. But there's like fire detectors around, there's like fire extinguishers around the place, and I'm like, cool, nice. I would not feel to buy these. These boots were made for walking. There's a good chance that this story is going to be familiar to some of you, though there's a good chance that you've never heard the whole story. Back in 2012, Angel Hamilton started streaming under the name of Zillion OP. He mainly streamed World of Warcraft and Diablo 3, often playing with his girlfriend, Brianna, who was also a streamer. Angel star Angel and Brianna, that is this combo of names, isn't it? Angel started to gain a decent sized following thanks to his personality and alleged gameplay skills, and he was soon streaming to two to four hundred people on a daily basis. Is that good? Is that a lot of people? I don't know what plot I'm on. On YouTube, I feel that'd be pretty low. Um, was it on Twitch? What was he saying? I don't know if that's good or not. I really don't know. I'm, I'm out of touch with Twitch. Angel started to... Sorry, I read that already. <laughs> Professionalism. It's not the largest audience in the world, but it's more than enough to make partner and start monetizing your streams. Okay. Yeah, I feel like two to four hundred people watching on a daily basis is probably enough to make a living, isn't it? Like, on Twitch, because those people are paying like... Wait, on Twitch, do you have to pay to watch? Do you have to pay to watch? So are those all 400 people? Are those people paying? If he's got 400 members, then the, and they say they pay five bucks, that's a decent living. And it was a good thing that Angel was able to make money off streaming because a near fatal car crash the previous year had left him in a wheelchair. Hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. Oh no, do I know this story? This is the dude. We yeah. Spoilers. Who gets up from the wheelchair when he thinks his stream is over? Ah! However, I feel like I do know this, but then there's something more to it. Like maybe he was actually in the wheelchair and that he could sometimes like walk, but it was extremely painful or something. So everyone was like dicking on him for pretending he was in a wheelchair, but then he was actually in the wheelchair and standing up is something that people in wheelchairs can sometimes do. I don't know if that's the story at all. Let's find out. <laughs> However, it didn't take long for people to start growing suspicious. Angel was allegedly really good at Diablo 3, but one day he fired up his stream while forgetting to hide his botting software. Sure version is that the software is a program people use to cheat, and Angel had just exposed his gameplay to the world as fraudulent. I've seen it reported that he was banned from Diablo as a result, though that and World of Warcraft are both owned by Blizzard, so I'd have thought they'd ban his entire Battle.net account rather than allowing him to continue playing another game. Who knows, though? But if he'd lied about that, then what else could he have been lying about? In January, 
January 2013, Angel's Facebook account was hacked, and the person who had taken control of it decided they were going to tell everyone. The banner image for Angel's page was changed to a screen cap. Oh, uh, what? Screen cap of his stream with the words, The Biggest A-Hole, Gamer Fakes Disability, to get donations. There were a lot of vaguely cryptic messages implying that Angel was fully capable of walking, though the person didn't provide any actual proof. Fans just blew it off as some extremely rude and shitty troll and went on supporting their favorite streamer. That all came to an end three months later, on the 5th of April 2013. Angel had been streaming World of Warcraft with Brianna and some third party, but he left the room momentarily. He rolled back up to his computer and put his headset on just to say he was back, but just a few seconds later, he would take the headset off and start stand up before walking off frame. Brianna had been mid-sentence when she saw this happen, suddenly stopped and said, Oh my god, it's a miracle! Before quickly going into some long rambling story about their dog taking their dog to the fish store. It was dumb and a probably improvised story, but obviously the point was just to get everyone's attention off of the empty wheelchair that was on Angel's stream. About 20 seconds after standing up, Angel realized that he fucked up and, returned and turned his camera down towards his keyboard to hide the empty chair. The stream ended shortly thereafter. He quickly hopped into chat to try and cover his lie, saying that he had pushed the chair, pushed himself out of the chair and fallen, banging against the side of the desk. His attempts to gaslight his community were not successful, and the Twitch clip of the disabled streamer standing up from his wheelchair quickly went viral. Angel and Brianna both had their accounts banned for fraud, and Twitch has Twitch really this was happening like eleven years ago. Was Twitch around eleven years ago? Shit. And Twitch offered to refund everyone who had subscribed to Angel. In his short time streaming, it's reported that Angel had made over twenty thousand dollars before refunds. Fans felt betrayed, and rightfully so, and for a long time that was the last anyone heard of Angel. That is until twenty twenty, when he returned to Twitch streaming under a new name, It's Bluish, and he had a bombshell to drop in the world. He really was disabled when he started streaming. He just got better. There was even proof of this, as Angel had numerous pictures on his personal Facebook page going back a year before he started streaming in which he was using a wheelchair. These pictures are all taken in public, including events like concerts. Unless we're to believe that he faked being in a wheelchair for a full year just in hopes that he could make it as a streamer, this seemed fairly conclusive. Yeah, I mean, okay, this isn't as bad, but it's, it's still quite like that. In an hour-long interview with YouTuber Wavy WebSurf, Angel explained that he really had been in a serious car accident and left him confined to a wheelchair for over a year, including when he began streaming. The damage wasn't permanent, but since being disabled had become part of his streamer identity, he didn't know how to tell his audience, guess what guys, I took two whole steps of physical therapy today. It hadn't started as a fraud, but not being transparent about his situation was still a shitty thing to do. Yeah, I mean, in his mind, I'm assuming he's quite young, he could be like, oh my god, the only reason they like me is because I'm disabed, and if I'm not, it in a wheelchair no one's gonna like and watch me anymore and my whole like cool thing is over i get it dude it's like if uh, if people found out that i wasn't actually bald and that i could grow a full glorious head of hair which i obviously definitely can people would stop liking me so i just keep pretending to be completely bald even though i could grow a glorious flowing head of hair i mean how betrayed would you feel if after all of these years of ins please tell me he Please tell me he says the bald thing. Enjoying Simon's content, you learn that he got better and doesn't actually need his glasses anymore. <laughs> I don't need my glasses anymore. I got laser eye surgery, but they're a part of my brand, so I just had like blank lenses put in them. It's just I didn't, I didn't want to have to get prescriptions put into all of my sunglasses, VR headset, all of this bullshit that you need in life. And yeah, no, I still wear glasses because it's just a part of my image, and I've worn them for for a fucking ever. Um, so yeah, that's the lie, but I, I've definitely talked about that before. <laughs> so, uh, I told the whole story of like getting laser eye surgery on a live stream as well adventure dude <laughs> of course while this is a rational explanation for everything that happened it still doesn't absolve angel of what he did when he was caught up when he was when he was caught standing up from his wheelchair, he had the opportunity to come clean and explain his road to recovery, but instead he tried to lie and attempt to cover it all up. Yeah, but it's a panic reaction. Give Angel a break. I mean, which was a real shitbag thing to do. Yeah, but it's a panic reaction. He's probably young. He's probably a young dude who's like, oh, fuck, no, you know, you didn't know what to do, so lied. It's okay. It's okay. Don't give him too much of a hard time. Then again, it had been over seven years since everything went down, and Angel seemed genuinely remorseful. Since it had been a fraud at the start, he just chose to hide his recovery. After that much time, I'd be inclined to give him a second chance. Yeah, totally. Twitch, however, disagreed. <laughs> oh no! Sort of, anyway. With the revelation that he really had been disabled for some time of his streaming career, it appears that they had considered unbanning his original account, but once they caught wind of the fact that he was streaming again under the name It's Bluish, they instead deleted that account as well for ban evasion. Oh, dude, that's unfortunate. 
That's really hard. Just go stream on YouTube or something. I stream on YouTube. I don't stream on Twitch. Everyone's like saying, why aren't you streaming on Twitch? I'm like, I don't know. YouTube's my business, daddy. I've got some loyalty towards them. The dangers of method acting. Method acting is a difficult thing. You have to fully immerse yourself in a character, becoming them completely. And once you do, it can be difficult to separate yourself from the character. That said, the idea that method actors frequently go insane is largely a myth based on a couple of anecdotal examples rather than having any basis in actual research. But there are other dangers to method acting, such as doing profoundly stupid shit because you are too in character to use your brain. Of course, this depends entirely on the character that you're trying to portray. If you're out and about playing the role of H. Pompous High Collar, it's unlikely that you'll do anything unseemly in public. Such behavior would be far too uncouth for such a snooty individual. But that changes quite a bit if you're out in public while in character as something like Edgelord McDouchebag. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I often go out in character as Edgelord McDouchebag. Edgelord McDouchebag's a fucking great name. <laughs> I would like to stream under Edge Lord, Edge Lord, Edge Lord McDouchebag the Third, Squire, or oh I don't know, Doctor Disrespect. Oh wait, he was in recently lots of scandals. He got banned or like a big. He got banned from Twitch like years ago, and no one knew why. And then it turns out he's like messaging minors or something like that, dude. God, why ruin your life? Why ruin your life like that, Doctor Disrespect? Why? Allegedly. Given the name and outlandish persona of Dr. Disrespect, portrayed by Herschel Beam the Fourth, uh, you would probably think that it would be somewhat difficult to shock his audience, and if what happened was merely edgy or crude, then you'd be correct. However, what happened on June the 11th, 2019, crossed the line from juvenile humor to outright stupidity and criminality. Herschel was attending the Electronic Entertainment Expo, or E3, in character as Dr. Disrespect and live-streaming the entire event. The stream was going as expected, with Dr. Disrespect walking around the expo hall and being generally loud and disrespectful. But the days of these events are long, and eventually you're going to need to take a leak, which would have been fine if the doc's cameraman didn't follow him into the bathroom. For possibly the first time, Dr. Disrespect's audience was genuinely shocked. Not only was filming inside a public restroom stupid and inappropriate, it's straight up illegal in California where E3 was held. Oh my god, though. Like... I know this is dumb, but it's the sort of thing that I just not think about. I'd be like, yeah, let's go pee, my dear, and then we'd be peeing. And it's like, wait, is this allowed? And then the next thing you know, your career's over. <laughs> it's like, what the... <laughs> this is the sort of dumb shit that I could do, not thinking about it at all, and then have deep regrets because I'm an idiot. And probably everywhere else for that matter. If you want to film in a bathroom, you need to do that in the privacy of your own home with other people's consents, not out in public in a restroom full of strangers. After entering the bathroom and walking around for a bit, Dr. Disrespect loudly declared, Ladies and gentlemen, I gotta take a diarrhea, I'll be right back, before walking toward an empty stall and stepping inside. At this point, you'd think that the cameraman would step outside and wait, but no, he stood there outside the stall while Dr. Disrespect appeared to be undoing his pants before sitting down, and then he finally leaves the shot. Not great, but maybe we could just write it off a momentary lapse in judgment yeah that i would i would it's dumb but often i'm like what will i write off as a momentary lapse in judgment is things that i could see myself doing <laughs> by mistake like this yes texting minors no <laughs> It's like fairly fucking simple, bro. Herschel was in character walking around like he owned the place and he didn't consider that he was about to enter a room full of random strangers with their dicks in their hands. And it's true, maybe we could write it off as that. If it were with the fact that it happened two more times that day, including the cameraman filming Dr. Disrespect using a urinal alongside random E3 attendees. <sighs> Hey, what's up? No penises, or peni, were caught on camera during any of this, but still. However, perhaps the most shocking part of it all is that with these events that transpired, between 7 and 20 members of Twitch staff were watching Doctor's Disrespect's live stream. Despite them all seeing what happened, it took hours before the stream was finally shut down. Eventually it was though, and Dr. Disrespect was banned from both E3 and Twitch, though the Twitch ban only lasted two weeks. Of course, people familiar with Dr. Disrespect know that this is hardly the most shocking thing to happen during one of his live streams with such an over-the-top persona. It'd be difficult for him not to piss off a bunch of people. And there was that time some pissed off person or persons opened fire on his house while he was streaming. Oh, uh, what? Wait, with a gun? But that's a story that's gonna have to wait till next time. I get the feeling Kevin wrote this before we found out why Dr. Disrespect got banned from Twitch permanently. Anyway, that's where we end today's episode. Thanks for watching. I've got to go and take a diarrhea. My cock is throbbing.